Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical, a very, very special radical. So we have the square root of one plus three times the square root of one plus four times the square root of one plus five times the square root of one plus. You get the idea, right? The numbers in front of the radicals are going to increase by one and they're going to be followed by the square root of one plus the next number, so on and so forth. So this is an infinite radical. So one of the questions that should probably come up is, does this converge? In other words, if you take the limit as n approaches infinity with infinitely many terms, is this going to give us a finite answer? That would be a good question, right? So this is actually part of something super duper special. And I made a video about it. If I can find it, I'll try to link it down below. Okay. So how do we evaluate these kinds of radicals. Uh, obviously, these kinds of radicals are famous due to Ramanujan. Ramanujan is a very famous mathematician who doesn't have a lot of formal education, but just amazing abilities, outstanding achievements. Oh, beautiful findings too. Anyway, so this is one of them, but I truncated this a little bit to make it less familiar to some people, but I'm pretty sure someone will recognize, right? So here's what we start with. We kind of start with, okay, let me not say that because that, that'll give away the answer. Let's start with four. Why with four? You might be questioning, right? Is it because this is a three? Probably, right? If there was a two here, I would start with three. Oh, so they're related somewhat. Anyways, let's start with 4 and let's write the 4 as the square root of... Let's write the 4 as the square root of 16, right? And then the square root of 16 can be written as square root of 1 plus 15, right? And the reason behind that is we're going to go ahead and separate the 1 and factor the rest. And then use the square root idea again and then we're going to separate the one and keep doing this until we get a nice pattern. Make sense? That's the whole idea. And let's see how we can get there. So the next thing we're going to do is factor 15 into the product of two consecutive odd numbers. In this case, it has to be odd numbers because 15 is odd. So it has to be 3 times 5. And you can definitely... It's easy to show that when you multiply x by x plus 2 and add 1 to it, this is going to be a perfect square. And that's actually the whole idea behind this. But how does it apply to our situation? You'll see in a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is take the 5 all the way on the inside, all the way on the right hand side, and write it as the square root of something. And what do you think that is? Of course, it's 25. And what is so special about these numbers is that 25 can be written as 1 plus 24, again, for the same reason. And 24 is the product of two consecutive even numbers. So we're going to alternate between odds and evens, odds and evens. Make sense? Okay. We don't have to do this a whole lot. I'll do a little bit and then you'll hopefully get the idea. But anyways. So the 24 is now going to be factored into what? 4 times 6. Great. And then the 6 all the way on the right hand side, this number here, the larger number. In other words, when I have x times x plus 2 with the 1, right? I always take care of this and write it as the square root of x plus 2 squared. Maybe you can, you can use this to come up with a more general formula because there are general formulas. Okay, cool. Now, here's the next thing. 6 is going to be written as what? The square root of 36 because that's what it is. And then we're going to have more radicals. Obviously, these are nested radicals, infinitely many, right? So we, we got to keep doing this. And 36, again, will be write, written as... 1 plus 35, which can be factored. Remember, you must separate the 1 so the rest is factorable like that. Make sense? Let's make sure we do that. And now 35 is basically going to be written as 5 times 7. 
And then guess what's going to happen next? You're going to take the 7 and write it as the square root of 49, and which will be then 1 times 48. Look, look at the pattern. 1 plus 48. 48 is going to be 6 times 8. And then you'll take that and write it as the square root of 64, so on and so forth. Okay? Make sense? Okay, so that's the whole idea. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. And we want to be able to compare this to what we have. Because remember, we're trying to evaluate an infinite radical. And what does this for what we started with have to do with this radical? Are they related? What do you think? Well, let's take a good look or maybe even copy this. Hmm, do you think I can copy that? Maybe I can just go ahead and bring the original here. <laughs> okay, that's probably easier. So my first line started with 4, right? And it came all the way down here. Actually, never mind. I'm going to write the original radical. What radical are we trying to evaluate, right? The original one. Okay, here we go. It starts with 1 square root of 1 plus 3 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times the square root of 1 plus dot, dot, dot. Three dots. Ellipsis, right? Goes on forever. So what is going on here? Take a look at this. They are the same. How do I know that? Because I know that the next term is going to be 5, and then the pattern will continue in the exact same manner. Does that make sense? So what is that supposed to mean? It means that we started with 4 and ended up with the infinite radical. So if we started with infinite radical and went backwards, we would be getting the given radical, which means this should equal 4. Make sense? So the infinite radical we're trying to evaluate is actually 4. That's the value, so it converges, but this is by no means a proof of convergence. How do you prove that it converges? That's a good question. You're probably going to need to use variables, use the x values, and kind of turn it into uh, something more general so you can kind of look at the limit. Does that make sense? Now, let me tell you something. Since this whole thing is 4, you can square both sides, right? And then you'll get this. And this is going to equal 16. And then you're going to notice that, okay, if that's 16, this needs to be 15. 3 times 5 is 15, so this needs to be 5. So in other words, if you start with 4, you get 5. If you start with 3, you get 4. What happens if you start with 2? Think about it, because in my other video, I went over that stuff. And hopefully, I will be able to find the answer. But this infinite radical converges, and the answer is 4. So it's finite. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.